So, good morning. My name is Joshua Halpern. Um, this project, uh, A-Cubed, a coding guideline for HCI and autism research using video annotation, is a collaboration uh, between myself and my advisor, Kerry Calaharios, who are in the Department of Computer Science, uh, Jim Halley, who's in the Department of Special Education, and Laura Deathorn and her master's student, Mary Kelsey Coletto, from the Department of Speech and Hearing Science. And by the end of this talk, um, I'm going to try to show you how theory from multiple disciplines can be brought together to create a set of uh, dependent variables to analyze interaction between nonverbal subjects and uh, computer-based uh, computer uh, interventions to encourage speech and vocalization, as well as a validation of our coding guidelines in an actual experimental context. So the main contribution of this work is a collection of dependent variables that allow you to analyze the interaction between nonverbal subjects and computer-based feedback systems to encourage vocalization. Um, and today I'm going to talk to you about how and where these guidelines, these set of variables, can be used to analyze this behavior. Our target demographic are nonverbal subjects. Um, so as we specifically looked at children with autism in this research, we believe that the applications of our techniques are very wide and varied to multiple areas of research, multiple types of disorders and diagnoses, as well as single subject design and longitudinal research. And the reason why this work is so important is because as researchers, it's incumbent upon us to not only analyze our own tools, but to have metrics that allow us to compare and contrast our research with the researchers of others in other disciplines and in other papers, so we can actually see the progress of research going forward. And by drawing on literature from many, many disciplines, um, we are able to uh, look at uh, and build upon a lot of work that's already been done, so we don't have to invent, uh, invent the wheel, if you will. Um, and once again, the contribution of this work is a set of dependent variables that you can use to analyze the interaction between nonverbal subjects and computer-based interventions. Now here's an example of where these type of guidelines can be used. This is a video of a child who has autism, he is a nonverbal subject, and he's interacting with a computer system which responds with feedback both visually and auditory based off of his vocalizations. <laughs> So, how can you assess his meaningful engagement? How can you tell what type of vocalizations that this child made were actually ones that could be considered meaningful and working towards speech and communication, and how many were vocal tics that this child may have? And a major difficulty when working with a nonverbal demographic like this is that you can't use traditional psychometric assessment. We can't use standard HCI techniques to evaluate these, these, these subjects. We can't give them a goal or a task to complete, so we can't look at task completion time, nor can we give them a Likert scale or a questionnaire or an interview to sort of see what their interaction with this system is. As a result, we're entirely dependent upon observational analysis of their behavior and their interaction with, this, with a computer or technology, which poses a whole set of problems. Now, the experimental context that this work was grounded in was a study designed to examine the child's uh, responses to computerized feedback in terms of their engagement, their attention, and vocal behavior. And we were specifically looking at children, nonverbal children who had autism. And as the previous talk described, autism is a developmental disorder which has impacts on the development of basic social interaction skills, uh, empathy, communication, and language development. The CDC rates it as uh, one in 150 children nowadays has, is being diagnosed somewhere on the autism spectrum. And once again, though we're situating it in the context of ASD and autism research, we believe that the implications of our work are far broader and work towards not any nonverbal subject interacting with technology to encourage speech or vocalization. And when we were doing this work, we examined a lot of the existing literature, and we found that there is not a body of work that actually looks at nonverbal subjects interacting with technology. But we did find there was a wealth of work that already had been done that looks at small parts of that question. So we were able to draw from a whole 
bunch of uh, theory and literature from many different domains and bring and pull out the best and most relevant information and coding guidelines. So we were able to draw from therapeutic, uh, therapeutic uh, intervention analysis, which is something that you would find a clinician using, looking to uh, chart the progress that a subject makes. We looked at diagnostic observations. So these are tools based off of child's behavior that allow uh, clinicians to diagnose children with autism. We're, we were able to draw many interesting parallels between our work and infant research because both of these demographics are nonverbal subjects who we have to base all of our research on their behavioral analysis, as well as HCI, which most of you are experienced in, which has been looking at the behavior of subjects working with computers for many, many years. We took the best out of all of this literature, the most relevant, the most salient work, and we were able to collect over 30 different sources that we were able to build upon and put together to create the Annotation for ASD Analysis Coding Guidelines, or A cubed. This is a set of 17 dependent measures, four durational measures, totaling 21 different metrics for analyzing the interaction between nonverbal subjects and, uh, and computers. It focuses on meaningful speech and the interaction between subjects and the computers. Um, the full set of all 21 metrics, the justification for them, is presented in our paper, as well as the uh, a larger version of what you see on the, le on the right side of the screen there, which is an actual coding guideline that we gave to coders to actually analyze this video. So if you want to be able to use the description of the variables that we, use, that we gave to coders to analyze video, um, that is right in the paper that you can use. Um, the way that we developed these variables is we drew from those 30 different sources and we iterated upon the definition of these variables over a four month period with, in collaboration with four coders from the Speech and Hearing to Science Department at the University of Illinois. And during these four months, we asked coders to continue to, uh, to annotate videos and uh, we looked for an, an agreement of 85% across all 21 metrics. Now we chose 85% because the seminal work in, the, in single subject design by Kasdan says that you should be hitting 80%. But if we're creating a new set of guidelines, we wanted to set that bar just slightly higher so that we can make sure that we have reliability in these coding guidelines that we created. And if you were to employ our system in your own research, we would actually suggest that you use 85% as a training guideline before you actually ask your, uh, your coders to go out and collect data for you. Um, and the nice thing about this system is we collected all of these variables, all of these metrics in one location and pre presented both the justification and the definition of those variables in this one paper. However, you don't need to use all 21 metrics when performing your own research. You can look at one variable or some small subset which more directly pertains to your research that you are doing. Now, the A-cube guidelines are, uh, are built off of a four-pass system. The first pass looks uh, at manual audio filtering. So as a computer scientist, I like to log a lot of data. But the microphone itself may pick up sounds that are not necessarily coming from the child itself. If they hit the table, if something drops in the room, if a researcher or, or their parent may speak in the room, you want to be able to filter out that information. And so our first pass of our system asks coders to go through a video and, and annotate the different parts of the video of sound that's not necessarily coming from the child, the non-meaningful sound. The second pass looks at the visual and audio attentiveness of, sub of subjects, their response and interaction with the computer. The third pass focuses on vocalization, and this, because the system is uh, targeted towards research that looks at speech and meaningful vocalization, we have an entire pass in many variables that look at the different types of vocalizations that subjects may be making. And the last pass looks at the time that a subject spends in chair, which you could be able to equate with their attentiveness to the, the system itself and willingness to participate. Um, once again, the full coding guideline, 